You may be familiar with the shape on the left called a Julia set, which relates to complex polynomials and their dynamics. The picture on the right is called a lamination of the unit disk and can be generated from the Julia set and serves as both a topological and combinatorial model for it. What we're after today is how this lamination comes from and encodes information about this Julia set. A hint about what we mean is that there is one triangle in the lamination for each cut point in the Julia set. This full lamination would have infinite triangles, and when we pinch them to points, the circle would become the Julia set. This pinching is illustrated using a finite number of these triangles, and we can see after we pinch, it kind of looks like the Julia set. The complex polynomial that has this specific Julia set is shown, and we will illustrate the dynamics with the white points. Each time the points move corresponds to one iteration of the polynomial. Some points run off to infinity while others remain small, and the Julia set is the boundary of the region that remains small under the iteration of the polynomial. Since this is a locally connected filled Julia set, we can use the Riemann mapping theorem to get a conformal map between the exterior of the unit disk and the exterior of the Julia set. A few rays and circles have been drawn to help visualize. Essentially, the Riemann map shrinks the circle to the boundary of the Julia set, which causes these rays and circles to distort, but in such a way that their images still cross at right angles. We will call the images of the rays external rays of the Julia set. Considering that the unit circle is also the Julia set of the polynomial z squared, this map also defines a conjugacy between the outside of the unit disk and the outside of the Julia set. We will utilize this conjugacy on the external rays. One external ray that lands at a cut point of the Julia set is shown, which happens to also be a fixed point of the polynomial. When we apply the polynomial, this external ray must map to another external ray that also lands at the fixed point. Iterating the polynomial, we see that the external rays that hit this fixed point are period 3. The conjugacy tells us that whatever rays these external rays correspond to must also be period 3 under z squared. Here, the rays happen to be at angles 1 7th, 2 7th, and 4 7th. If we measure angles between 0 and 1 instead of degrees or radians, the thing to notice is that the period 3 external rays rotate about a single fixed point, while the three rays on the circle are separate. To account for this, we identify the three rays by drawing cords inside the unit disk between their landing points. We've created a triangle with period 3 vertices under z squared, which is the beginning of our lamination. This triangle with period 3 vertices models the dynamics of the fixed point of the Julia set with period 3 external rays. We hope this is a helpful illustration of what a quotient is for the uninitiated. The fixed point we've been using is in the Julia set, so its preimage must also be in the Julia set and will also be a cut point. Therefore, we can follow the same process as we did with the fixed point. Find the rays the external rays correspond to and draw cords between their endpoints. As we can see, with two triangles, the quotient resembles the Julia set much better than with one triangle. We now have every tool we need to construct a full lamination step by step. At each step, the lamination will model more of the Julia set's dynamics, and at each step, the quotient of the lamination will be a better topological model of the Julia set. The goal of this video was to give a quick overview of how laminations of the unit disk can be generated from a complex polynomial, and how we can view them as both a topological and combinatorial model of the Julia set. 
By now, I hope we can return to the picture side by side and see the connection. The idea of using laminations to study the dynamics of complex polynomials was that of William Thurston. There is much more to learn and research about laminations than this quick introduction could touch on, and a few resources will be mentioned in the description for anyone interested in learning more.